Hello everyone and welcome to the Vortex where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris coming to you from El Paso, Texas where a quiet yet monumental battle is being waged. Santa Maria, Madre de Dios, ruega por nosotros los pecadores. It's a sight not unfamiliar to Catholics. The faithful gather together to pray the rosary for a particular intercession. In heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth. What makes this scene remarkable, however, is where the rosary is being prayed. Right outside the front steps of the diocesan chancery. Here in El Paso, a struggle is going on between the bishop and the faithful and the battle is being waged ultimately over the definition of authentic Catholicism. A little over a year ago, the City Council of El Paso voted to extend employment benefits to same-sex couples. Enter Father Michael Rodriguez, who protested the action both from the pulpit and in editorial pieces in the local El Paso Times newspaper. He was the only voice. Mm -hmm. Our other shepherd should have been the voice. But Father Me Michael stood up in the void. His repeated outspokenness brought a rebuke from the local bishop, Armando Ochoa, who adamantly insisted that Father Michael was not expressing church teaching, but rather his own personal opinion. The diocese quickly came out publicly and said, uh, that's just his personal opinion. And it's like, <laughs> excuse me? <laughs> I mean, that, that's, I mean that, that's right front and center in the catechism of the Catholic Church. He cited biblical passages, he cited the Catechism of the Catholic Church, and the result of that is the bishop uh, had him banished to a remote corner of the diocese. A couple of weeks ago, the Catholic blogosphere lit up when the bishop announced that Father Michael was being sent 250 miles away. Bishop Ochoa has been the ordinary of El Paso since 1996, coming from Los Angeles where he was an auxiliary under Cardinal Roger Mahoney noted for his more liberal and progressive approaches to all church matters. We tried contacting Bishop Ochoa at the Chancery Office to see if he would appear on camera and talk with us about these issues. We were told that he didn't have the time. Because of the extreme distance from El Paso, we also have not spoken with Father Michael Rodriguez, but we did speak with his family members and some parishioners, some of whom were generous, who generously paid for us to come here and help tell the world their story. With Father Michael now hundreds of miles away, these former parishioners now have no recourse to the parish life of a traditional Latin Mass parish. Their former parish was a beehive of activity in the middle of the day, every day, with various programs and classes that Father Michael had established. Now it is essentially deserted, from a thriving parish to one on life support in less than a month. We want the traditional Mass, and we have a right to have it. Uh, Pope Benedict already has issued various documents, especially this last one, Universe Iglesia, that says we, the laity, have a right to have the traditional Mass offered to us, and the bishops are supposed to do everything in their power to provide it. I'm from Amagordo, which is 90 miles away, so I was already coming down here every Sunday, and when I read the email that I got from his brother saying that he was being transferred, I started crying immediately. Not just the traditional Latin Mass, but also the traditional Catholic life, where we can practice our faith, we can have the classes every week, um, just like we used to. And also with my children, they want to receive the First Holy Communion in the, in the traditional way. But the battle over Father Michael's ouster and the lack of a traditional Latin Mass parish is proving to be just the flashpoint of a much larger war being waged these days in the church, a war over the definition of what it means to be Catholic. Well, just because somebody's a priest or a bishop doesn't make them a Catholic. I mean, um, Martin Luther was a priest, and still is, by the way. Uh, John Cranmer was a, was a priest. He was actually a bishop. But n none of those guys were, were Catholics. So being a priest doesn't guarantee Catholicity or orthodoxy. It is not about tolerating evil. We have to fight evil. And unfortunately, we have lost that. We think that we are just here to be also m merciful and, and, and loving. They don't even know what are the spiritual or the corporal works of mercy. They just think that tolerating is being merciful. And it's not. And uh, that just gets me 
<laughs> Just go. <going. laughs> and so is this a sign that you stand up for what what the Catholic Church teaches? And I'm a convert. I was raised Baptist, and I came in because of the true teachings of the Church for 2,000 years. You can check it. It's in the documents. Mm -hmm. And that's what I love about the church. It, you can ch fact check it. And all Father Michael was doing was bringing forth the truth. The official reason given by the bishop for essentially silencing Father Michael by uprooting him and relocating him 250 miles away was that his preaching against homosexuality in the El Paso City Council decision to extend benefits to homosexual couples is that his newspaper articles and preaching would threaten the tax-exempt status of the diocese, its 501c3 federal tax designation by the IRS, something parishioners simply do not believe applies. Well, that's kind of disingenuous and, and actually kind of hysterical because, I mean, the bishop, uh, His Excellency, cited the IRS saying, you know, you can't do that, yet uh, we have an organization here in El Paso called Apizo, at least I think that's what it's still called, and it's a Alinsky-type organization and they're in like Flint and then the in the diocese here and uh, they regularly invite uh, candidates into Catholic churches and and, and uh, bully them into allegiance with them and so I guess that's that's okay somehow I guess that's somehow different so what we have here is it's a very progressive uh, diocese and everybody's on board with it most of the local priests Astrid Terrazas managed to speak directly with Bishop Ochoa and his answer to her was less than satisfying. And so he responded that uh, we could go to other churches. I said, Bishop Ochoa, all of us that go to San Juan Bautista have been fleeing from your Novus Ordo churches because I personally am up to here with the jokes that the priests give us in their sermons or when they give us Hollywood movies uh, to describe the gospel or the loud music or the plunging necklines, or the, or, the, or the cell phones, or simply all those women, you know, climbing up and down the altar. I can't put up with that anymore. This battle royale over authentic Catholicism has been brewing for some time now in the church just below the surface. The modernists are slowly beginning to lose their grip on the levers of power as the younger, more orthodox crowd slowly comes to the forefront. The traditional-minded crowd says it has been shoved to the back of the bus and sometimes even thrown off the bus by modernists for too long now, and they have grown weary of it. They are beginning to marshal forces and exchange contacts with each other all over the globe, thanks to the Internet and discovering that they are not alone and are not crazy like they've been told for decades by modernist priests and bishops. We have lost that sense of... Catholicism um, among, among our priests and religious and a lot of the laity, they don't recognize that there is a tremendous crisis going on and they think everything is just hunky-dory. It is not. And so we're praying for our bishop. He has such a heavy responsibility to really provide us with Christ's teaching. He's supposed to be his representative here. But the worldliness that I see with the bishops and the priests that are so concerned about their reputation, their conform conformity with the IRS, for example, as unfortunately our bishop has um, accused our dear priest, Father Michael Rodriguez, of running afoul with, I mean, that's just, that, that is just so unfair and, and uh, it's outrageous. What we have here is a community, a, a group of people, faithful Catholics, that want the truth. They're tired of the lies. The final fate of Father Michael remains up in the air as faithful Catholics here petition to have him return to the parish of San Juan Batista. But in the meantime, the little ghost town of, that Father Michael was banished to just happens to have an almost never used parish perfectly suited to celebrating the traditional Latin Mass, which Father began almost immediately. It turns out that some older ladies in the new parish had been praying for decades for a priest to come and offer the Latin Mass. As for a parish that will give them the authentic Catholic life in El Paso, the former parishioners say they will not stir from their rosaries in front of the chancery until they have one. From El Paso, Texas, at the scene of what may become Many more such standoffs around the Catholic world in coming months and years. I'm Michael Voris. God love you.